the interview. Hey, how about this? A school board actually listening to the constituents, to the parents. The Richland School Board decided to ban critical race theory in classrooms. Joining me on the line is one of the school board members, also a gubernatorial candidate, Sammy Bird. Welcome back to the show. Jason, it's good to be back with you. Thank you. How are you defining CRT? Wow. So I'll take their own definition. If you go to the textbook Critical Race Theory, uh, written by Delgado, Stefanczyk, and Harris, it illustrates the five tenets of CRT. So briefly, I'll just say critical race theory, by their definition, is that America in its institutions are systemically racist in that all we do as an American society is intended to subjugate black indigenous people of color. That's how they're viewing critical race theory from the progressive left perspective. And and so the ban, in effect, says you cannot teach that as fact or, or through that lens. How, how, how exactly would this be policed? Well, it, 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 you have to have your left and right limits established first. Yeah. And so if you look at our policy, our policy speaks to that we are not going to teach children that their skin color determines their ability to succeed in life, that their race does not determine their moral character, or that their race makes them responsible for past transgressions in, in the case of white children. So we're not going to teach young brown children that their future is determined by the color of their skin. And we're not going to teach white children that there is something for them to be ashamed about that they had nothing to do with, neither did their parents or their grandparents, and we can go back. And so, in fact, this policy actually states that we will teach factual history, that we will teach civics, social studies, factual history of the United States from a nonpartisan stance, free from political or personal biases, I fail to see what's wrong with this policy and why the progressives and a couple school board directors were up in arms about supporting this. Well, I, I think you do know why they're up in arms, right? I mean, they, they believe <laughs> they, they believe that the, the, the principles or the tenets of, uh, of CRT are true, that this is a country founded in white supremacy, that you cannot get far in life as a result of your skin color. I, I'm assuming you find it somewhat ironic when people tell that to you. Yes. And, and in fact, they, they did. And I had a uh, one of the progressives uh, from the community um, spoke out uh, via Zoom during our presentation and mm-hmm. and began to say, well, you know, Mr. Bird, you've told us about your story of being the poor black child born in the ghetto of East Oakland, pre-civil rights. And you've told us about this over and over and over again and just literally uh, trying to cheapen my life story when, in fact, my life story reflects the American dream and the true essence of what America stands for. Meritocracy, regardless of your color, your race, your religion, you can achieve what you believe in America because of our freedoms, our liberties, and our opportunities. And my mother knew firsthand, Jason, I will not teach my child that he cannot. I will teach my child that he can. We are Americans not Americans. And my mother knew that. She wanted her child to thrive and to succeed. So she built resiliency in me that I could look past race and be accountable for my actions and take charge of my destiny. This is what we want for our children. We want them to have resiliency. We do not want them to be raised or educated as victims of society. We want them to navigate the challenges of society with personal courage, self-worth, This is what's important for us as a society to raise our children to be resilient. It's a wonderful message. It's a message I wish that would get in front of more parents to get in front of their own kids. Uh, But it's going to take more people like you to step up and make that happen. Very quickly, last question from just a practical standpoint. How do you enforce this kind of ban when, as you know, a lot of the CRT that gets in the classroom is not necessarily via a textbook that is framed around CRT, that's really easy to police, but it's teachers who bring in extra materials or the way they talk about certain things during their lectures that that is done through that lens. So how do you police it and what are the consequences if if a teacher decides to teach it anyway? 
So that that is correct. And so this is the first step. Getting 2360 passed was something that was important to me. That's why I pushed it so hard. And so now that we have our left and right limits, should we receive any information, complaints, or concerns that this is is happening within our classrooms. And and certainly, children often share with their parents what they're learning, and that gives parents an opportunity to call into the district to let us know what's going on. And because we have a policy in place that says we are not to indoctrinate our children, we're not to educate them in this way, well, then now we have something that we could use to hold those teachers accountable. And and it's important to understand that our Richland teachers are amongst the best in the state. This is a small minority of individuals who have and are bringing in their own Mm -hmm. personal beliefs. And that's what this policy says we're not supposed to do. We're supposed, supposed to be objective and teach truth and facts. And so we can hold people accountable when we actually have a policy in place. Secondly, it would be to say, Now that you're doing this, we're going to have the investigation, we're going to look at it, and we're going to take steps to ensure that you do not do it again. So the the direction we're heading in is first, get a policy. Second, ensure that all teachers have buy-in and support this. And then third is to hold all teachers accountable equally. Well, kudos to you and your colleagues, the ones at least who voted to support the ban on CRT in the classroom. We've been talking with Semi Bird, not just a Richland school board member, but also a candidate for governor in Washington State. His website, birdforgovernor.com, all spelled out, birdforgovernor.com. Semi, thank you so much for stopping by, as always. My pleasure, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to The Jason Rancho. To The Jason Rancho. To The Jason Rancho.